By Virginia Avenue standards, it's quite late at night as our scene opens now. Almost 11.45 o'clock. And here in the living room of the small house halfway up in the next block, we find Mr. Victor Gook and Mr. Rush Gook. Rush, clad in pajamas and bathrobe, occupies his father's easy chair. He seems uneasy. Vic, who has just this moment arrived home from a meeting of the sacred stars of the Milky Way, removes his hat and contemplates his son with disapproval. He's saying... You know what time it is? Get nine for twelve. Or more romantically, midnight. Tomorrow's a school day, ain't it, my friend? Yeah. One takes advantage of one's mother's absence. How you mean? Mom, don't allow you to sit up and read this late. This third Lieutenant Stanley book is interesting as heck. Couldn't force myself to lay it down. And besides that, another fact... Well, that... since we're bachelors and our domestic routine is out of adjustment, I'll overlook the matter this time. Did you put the milk bottle out? Yeah. Front door locked? Yeah. I took care of the back. Suppose we hit the hay. All right. I was sleepy as a horse. <sighs> Lodge meeting lasted later than usual tonight, didn't it? Uh-huh. Didn't break up till 10.30. Then a half a dozen of us dropped in at the Greeks and ate scrambled eggs and talked over the European situation. Mm. Oh, but I fall into a deep stupor the moment my head touches the pillow. Mm. Your pals show up to study algebra? Yeah, they did. Accomplish anything? Uh, quite a bit. We asked each other review questions. Asked each other review questions the first ten minutes and then devoted the remainder of the evening to jolly games and pastimes, huh? No, we stuck pretty close to algebra all the time. Who all was here? A uh, nicer guy, Bluetooth Johnson, Milton Welch, Smelly Clark, and Rooster Davis. A remarkable group of great gentlemen and brilliant scholars. They didn't break any furniture, did they? Uh, Bluetooth Johnson fell off in a kitchen chair, but no damage was done. We're fortunate. Golly, you're tired. <sighs> Jump up from there, Oscar. We only got about seven hours to sleep. Okay. Uh, by the way, Rooster Davis whipped out a compliment for you. I'm uh, much obliged to <clears throat> Rooster. What did he say? Well, sir, it's a long, long story. He started out by passing... I'm him... afraid I won't have time to listen to long, long stories right at the moment, coal oil. Perhaps uh, tomorrow... Just one is... second, Ralph. Take pardon. Wait a minute. You wish to chat? Rooster Davis is here. Once again, I beg pardon? Rooster Davis is upstairs in bed. You're going to think I'm an old Paul Pry, always trusting my nose in other people's business, but may I... I stuck my point. neck out, Gov, but I didn't think you'd care. Suppose you... They got an automobile load of company over at Davis's house. A bunch of relatives from Grand Rapids, Michigan dropped in on him unexpected. Rooster was faced with the prospect of spending the night on a couch in the attic. I said... Rooster by George, why don't you stay here? You're a kind man, Rish. I figured it'd be okay with you. If Mom were here, would she say okay? Yes, I'm pretty sure she would. Where does Rooster slumber? In the big bedroom. Do that? After all, he's a guest. I couldn't put him down cellar or on the roof, could I? You understand, of course. You're not going to deceive your mother any. All she has to do is glance in the big bedroom and know it's been occupied. Oh, like I said before, Gov, I'm pretty sure Rooster's sleeping there'd be okay with Mom. I've put my friends up before. Why, just last month, nicer Scott spent the night here. You remember. Let's see what... Okay. Okay, I'm not kicking. Only I advise you to take pains with that bedroom tomorrow and see that Rooster leaves it as neat and orderly as he found it. Well, night-night, I must wait. When you and Rooster uh, see Rooster in the morning, tell him the tower with the blue border is a private property of your father and must not be disturbed. All right. I'll tip him off. Your brow is still furrowed with anxiety, slaveholder. Haven't I acted reasonably? Gus, <laughs> there's something else. Save it for tomorrow. No, wait. Great guns, man. It's almost midnight. I love to exchange uh, sparkling parlor crosstalk as much as the next four. There's but, uh, another individual upstairs. What? Rotten Davis is here. Rush, dear chum, you may have your old man pegged for a nickel. Uh, listen to me a second, Gavin. Don't scream bloody murder. If your mother were here, there'd be so much screaming a bloody uh, murder. Let me tell you exactly what happened. All right. And after that, you and me will have a heart to heart. When the guy started to go home when we got through studying algebra... Rooster explained about this automobile load of relatives that dropped in at his house from Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
He said he was faced with the prospect of spending the night on a couch in the attic. He We've said, already been over that well. You said, Roosty, by George, why don't you sleep here? Yeah. All right. Suppose we get on to Rotten. By the way, where's this Rotten slumber? With Rooster. Um, pleasant dreams to both of them. You may also inform Rotten the towel in the bathroom with the blue border belongs to me. I will. Gov, I didn't think you'd care. I think Whether you'd... I care or not, I'm not going to let it keep me out of the hay any longer. I'll brood over the matter tomorrow. Once again, night night. I want to tell you exactly what happened, Gov, so you won't be sore. My soreness... I said to Rooster, I said, Rooster, why don't you stay here? And he said, fine. Wait a second while I fetch my brother Rush. No, he didn't. He says, that's mighty white of you, Rush. I says, not at all. I'm sure my father won't have any objection. He says, well, I've got to <clears throat> telephone home and get permission from my folks. I says, go ahead. So he telephoned home and his folks wanted to know if you had room for Rush. Exactly. You hit the nail right square on the head. How many relatives was in that crowd from Grand Rapids? Oh, gosh. Uncle Funny, Aunt Grace, Cousin Harry... Uncle Frank, Aunt Wee, Cousin Flub. Oh, gosh, a big gang. Well, so be it. As far as I'm concerned, Rooster and Rotten can sleep upstairs and welcome. The responsibility, however, in case your mother raises a kick, is entirely on your shoulders. That's understood. Fine. Well, a tender good night to you and your friends. I'm getting a little too old for this night owl business. I'm going to pull the covers up around my uh, Just schedule. one more second, guys. I'm afraid Rooster that I... Rooster telephoned I... home and it was just like you get. He talked to his mother and told her I'd invited him to sleep at my house and she wanted to know if there was room for Rotten. Well, what could I say? Had to say yes. Also, I figured as long as the big bedroom was going to be slept in anyway, what'd be the difference if two guys slept in it or if one guy... I absolved you from guilt, so polish. Let Rooster and Rotten sleep their heads off. Suppose we cut short this fascinating colleague. Uh, now, now, wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Rush. Rush, is there still a third party upstairs? Rush. Is there still a third party upstairs? Yeah. Ooh. Roper. 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 Who? Roper Davis. And Roper Davis? Rooster and Rotten's cousin. Now listen, God, I appreciate you're going to swallow your shoes and scream like a panther. I don't blame you. The situation got out of my hands. If Mom had been around or you'd been around, it wouldn't have happened. The midnight bells will chime in a few minutes, and here I stand in my brilliantly lighted ribbon room. After I... Rooster telephoned home, we sat around waiting for Rotten to show up. Pretty soon Rotten showed up, and he had Roper with him. And Miss Davis figured if we had room for two guys, we'd have room for three. My hands were tied. I couldn't kick Roper out in the street. Could I? Could you what? Kick Roper out in the street? Rush. Yeah. Are there any others upstairs to sleep? No. You're sure? Yeah. There's three of them, and that's the sum total? Yes. Rooster Davis, Rotten Davis, and Roper Davis comprise our complete roster, I guess? Right. You understand how it was now, don't you, Gus? I couldn't help it. Don't go Where does Roper slumber? Beg pardon? Where does Roper slumber? He slumbers... Yes. Roper slumbers where, Rush? God, my bed is a single bed. There's not room for two individuals in it. You'll appreciate that yourself. Roper slumbers in my bed? Yours is a double bed. I am to understand, then, that an utter stranger is for... He's a out. swell fellow, Gov. Roper is a swell fellow? He used to play third base with the East Lansing, Michigan Skunks. A professional baseball team that won the championship. Tired as I am, I must share my bed with an other stranger. Tired as You I go am. in my room, Gov. I'll call in with Roper. Do that. My bed's a little short for you, but you'll sleep fine. By George, Your I... Your mother prophesied we'd get ourselves tied in that. We had to get along by ourselves a week. Well, apparently she was right. Yeah, takes mine to keep the wheels on the track. Wouldn't be anything like this happen if she was on deck. <laughs> 